Well, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the timber frame uh, workshop. I think that that's what we're going to call this instead of a multi-purpose building. We're just going to call it a workshop because the tractor is going to work from here. Uh, we're going to have the actual workshop here with all my tools and everything. And then over there is going to be the sawmill. So basically it's going to be a workshop. Um, but my son, uh, he and I talked and we decided to change the roof line. We're going to have all of them match instead of having uh, shed roofs. Of course, the middle section will be elevated above the two sides, but um, so that's going to require me taking out this middle post that I put in over here and actually putting up one that will actually hold my ridge beam. With that said, one of these is going to replace that middle post over there, but I can still use that middle post in other areas. So now the beams that we actually put up there, we just screw them in. I don't have the pegs put in yet because I wanted to see how it was going to fit together, how it was going to look, and everything actually went together really well. So um, I will be taking those off and we will replace that post up here before we actually put the wooden pins in there and get it permanent. So we'll have to whittle one out to match this one as far as uh, the beams go and the bracing goes and then I'll have to uh, make preparation for my ridge beam and then this other middle post will go right here uh, on either side of these floor beams right here my floor joists are going to come up sit on this sill plate right here and connect to this so that other 16 foot post it will go right here and then of course I'll have another short post on either end of this for the front and the rear you know there's a whole lot of preparation that goes into building a structure like this um, I am using primarily all poplar with the exception of the siding I'm going to try to cut it out of yellow pine because like I said before I think it will last longer um, but I am cutting these I am burning these to try to help preserve it and also to give it the same look that I built everything else around here um, but it's really turning out nice this poplar wood with uh, slightly burning it and then that timber frame oil um, is kind of matching the pine that I put on the outside of the cabin. So I'm really excited that this I think is really really going to look good once I get it finished. Now I was going to build the cabin the way that I'm going to build this uh, workshop but then I decided to change that later on um, and do board and batten. But what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, build the walls um, between my posts. That way you'll still be able to see the structure from the outside. So it's really important uh, to get these sealed up as well as possible because these will be exposed to the outside. It will be unlike the cabin. And I think it's really going to look good when I get it done. Uh, the exterior will actually be lap siding between uh, the post. So stay tuned for all of these episodes because I believe it's really going to turn out really nice and I think you're going to like it. I've actually still got plenty of material to work with. Um, I've got three 16 footers that I cut so I need one to go on this side and I need one to go on that side. I'll have one left. I can use it as a tie beam to go from this wall to this wall. I'll have to cut two more of them, but I've got enough short post for the front and the back, and as soon as I get that done, then we can start working on um, the rafters going up and then putting on some sheathing, putting out some black paper, at least for the winter time, and getting the tractor under roof because it's brand new and I don't want it to be out in the weather exposed to the sun. Um, that does, you know, deteriorate your hydraulic hoses and things like that. Plus the fact, you know, it would be out of the rain. So, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the changes that were going to be made to the workshop. I talked to you about last week, um, taking this area right here and building kind of like a temporary shelter, putting in a, a fire reflector and so forth. I did bring down that big maple stump so that I could actually use it as a table. Um, and a couple of cedar logs that were up there as well. But I think I'm going to take this other table over here where I'm working that will allow me some sort of a um, 
bench top uh, that I can put tools on and things like that. <clears throat> and I'll actually use this maple stump over there because uh, it is a little bit lower and it would actually fit those benches over there if I was to scoot up and eat from it. But uh, I'm going to get that going pretty soon because of this stuff that I'm wearing here. But it will allow me, you know, a place in the wintertime where uh, when it's really cold I can come over here and warm my hands up real quick and then get back to work. Also, I could prepare some meals down here uh, around the fire pit and so forth. So um, I've still got these logs right here that I need to strip the bark on, take those up to the outdoor kitchen. I could get those out of the way by doing that because next year I'm going to be building a platform to put a tote on to catch the water off of that roof. Uh, and that's the support post that I'm going to use because those totes will probably end up weighing right at a ton when you fill them up. So it's going to have to have something pretty strong underneath it. But uh, that's what those uh, pine posts are there for. Then I've got that stack of wood that was up there by that tiny house that will serve to hopefully build a fire. Uh, I don't know that it would last all winter long, but it will certainly go. That's the last of the uh, box elder that I cut up from the church. Uh, that's the last of it right there. And it will serve quite a few fires. Another thing that you may see in some upcoming videos, the church is starting a project where they're going to be building a pavilion behind the church. Um, so I will probably film a little bit of that because I'm going to take the tractor, um, that extension that I made so that we can lift the trusses up on top. They did buy six by sixes, so we'll be setting those uh, around the concrete slab that they poured. You know, it would be nice to have a pavilion out behind the church that way when we have get-togethers uh, in the summertime, we can go down there, we can actually cook. We're going to build a fire pit down there, and later on they're going to build a playground for the kids. So you probably see some of that coming up in the future. You know, I think we're probably in full color right now. Um, a lot of the leaves have fallen, but a lot of the hardwoods have peaked with their um, color. The yellows and the reds and the, basically the golds. Um, and, and it looks, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm going to try to get the drone up and fly it a little bit so that you all can see that. You know, having this little tiny house gone uh, sure opens up a whole lot of possibilities. Not really sure what I'm going to do with this area yet. Um, I thought about building, you know, like a little carport where I could park the truck in here. I thought about just leaving this when I get this landscaped right here. Um, I could build like a little gazebo um, and have some, you know, have a small fire pit on the outside of it, have some benches around it. I thought about that. I thought about just leaving it blank and planting uh, grass in there um, against the, the back line of the woodland. Um, so I, I don't really know. You, you guys leave me some comments and let me know if this was uh, your area right here, what would you do with it? Um, because it's always good to have another opinion um, and some of you might be able to think outside the box a little bit more than I can so yeah leave me some comments on what you would do with this area if it was yours probably see a few changes like some things sitting around uh, that you didn't used to see because that I'm telling you what that little tiny house it was basically the storage shed. It stored everything that I had. Um, those are actually full. There's two diesel and there's two gasoline. Um, I was keeping them in where you know it was nice and shady. I'm going to have to have a spot or find a spot actually to put those. But um, I did get the rock finished. You all have seen that and you'll see in tomorrow's video as well me finishing the other sides with that uh, Eagle Supreme Seal. I'll tell you what, this side that I did right here still looks the same as the day that I did it. And you'll see in tomorrow's video how well that stuff covers and how far it covers. I am really, really impressed with that Eagle Supreme Seal. Um, it's a concrete sealer. That's what they told me that all the contractors like. Um, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't as expensive as the timber frame oil, I can tell you that. It was about a uh, $75 cheaper on a five gallon can but it still costs around $159 but uh, it is well worth it because I only used about half of that can um, on the cabin here uh, getting it all done 
and uh, it's done a really, really great job. So I think you'll be impressed tomorrow when you see the whole cabin done. All right, a bit of an update on the TYM 574. I'll tell you what, this tractor is an absolute beast. I really, really like it. Still trying to get used to the cab uh, because without the cab, it does, does offer a lot more visibility, but it is nice having the cab. Uh, every time I crank it on the ra crank it up, the radio comes on, which sometimes I turn it down so that I can listen to the machine. But I keep it at a very low volume anyway. Um, having the heat and air in there is nice, although I'm not in there very often because I'm either grabbing a log, throwing it on the sawmill, then I'm in the sawmill the rest of the time, uh, or I'm setting a post or you know just doing something but basically there's not a lot of cab time um, on the tractor up here for the things that I'm doing but I will tell you this that there is a huge 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 difference in industrial tires which is what this came with that's all they had basically was industrial tires and the ag tires like I had on the Kubota I went down in the hollow yesterday all I had was about eight cinder blocks on the front it had rained the night before um, and the tractor was kicking backwards trying to hold itself because it was basically sliding down the hill um, and I had to use four-wheel drive to come back up out of there because the reason being is these will probably last a lot longer because the tread compared to agricultural tires the tread is wider uh, it's thicker uh, but it's not nearly as high. It's only about an inch high. And as you can see, this had already filled up with mud. So basically all I had was a round wheel. And the front didn't do that until I put it in four-wheel drive coming back up. Where the agricultural tires are spaced, the cleats are spaced a little bit differently, and they stick up about twice as high. So they can kind of somewhat self-clean themselves out. Um, but and then the other thing too is I guess you can tell they've got this thing pumped totally up now you really don't want I haven't changed it yet but you really don't want to have a tractor with the tire pumped all the way up like that you want to have some air uh, you want to let some air out where the tire runs a little bit on the flat side because that allows um, more surface actually touching the ground and it will give you a lot more traction. As it sits here, I've probably only got one cleat, if two, actually sitting on the ground. If I let some air out of it, I could possibly get three to four cleats resting on the ground that would give me some more traction. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I'm gonna have to rotate the valve stem where it's sticking straight up, and hopefully I'll be able to let some air out of that where it'll give me some more traction Plus, it won't be so hard of a ride when you go over a bump. It will run a whole lot smoother, kind of like um, a radial tire does. You know, I've got a lot of work to do in preparation for that uh, church pavilion that we're doing down there. I've got to run down, get a log, cut it up into some 2 by 4 so that we have some bracing material for all the posts that we're going to set around the concrete slab that they poured. So that's how I've got to do that. I've got some more work to do on the smokehouse. Then I've got to get back down here on the workshop whittling out some of the timbers uh, to go down there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this video here. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Hope each and every one of you have a fantastic day. Y'all take care. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.